Welcome back. Today we are going to make a clock from a plate and a couple of other interesting things. So stick around. We will be right back. Okay, today we're going to cut holes with our Dremel instead of the big old power drill. Personally, I find this a great deal easier. Uh, for a lot of us, holding that drill up is not easy. In general, women do not have the same upper body strength as men do. Certainly, I am no longer 18, so whatever upper body strength I had when I was 18, well, some of that has faded over the years. A Dremel, on the other hand, is a whole lot easier, at least in my opinion. But it's a very different method of doing it. Very different, and it's, it's not something that's really intuitive. So, blind woman, power tools, plenty of caffeine. Yeah, what could go wrong with that? All right. Let's take a look at our supplies first. This is uh, a box of Dremel bits. And I have another one. Where are you? Here you are. Another box of Dremel bits. And I'm going to be switching back and forth between two different Dremel bits for this job. It's just how it's done. Switching the Dremel bits is part of the problem. Um, when you get your Dremel bits, they will come with instructions, which you will ignore, and here's why. I'm going to read you. I'm not making this up. This is actually what it says. Grind with a little slant angle of shank, and shank goes round until a small hole happens. Like, by magic, I guess. The method like below. The method likes this is likes, plural, below to go through. Really? Gets better. When E-type hole saw close to life span or drill the thick glass, please notice the temperature differential around hole getting high. Under long time of rub, it will cause glass break. Uh, yeah. Um, every 15 seconds, dip hole saw in water. The faster the frequency of dipping water, the higher the efficiency. Go ahead. Tell me you can figure that out. So, this is how we're going to do it. This is our plate. I have our mark on the back. Remember, we did our low-tech thing with our piece of paper. We just traced around. Then we fold our paper in half. And to get our hole, we fold it in half again. However, that's not what I'm going to do with this piece of paper, because we're making a clock. When I fold it in half, all I'm going to do is pinch the corner to mark it. Then I'm going to take it up and fold it in thirds. And the way I do that is I match this. One end here at the fold, the end on the inside at the fold, and voila, thirds. Then I fold it. Okay, I'm going to fold it again. Right here, 
all these folds, I have 12 of them. That's an easy way to mark a clock. Now you can do this with a protractor. Each of these are going to be 30 degrees, but low tech, very easy. We're going to save that for later because we're not marking yet. We are drilling. We're going to start with the first of our bits, and it's a conical shaped bit. It's flat on the top, and it's got a rounded cone shape as it moves into the shaft. This is a diamond coated bill, uh, diamond coated bill, diamond coated bit for our drill. There we go, that's how I got to bill. Um, diamond coated, it's going to cut through very quickly. This is a Craftsman um, high-speed tool. You can use a Dremel. You can use any brand you want. When I start to work, I'm going to move a little bit outside of my center point because I am using this to score a little hole. Um, it'll be a little circle around that center point. I'm going to keep that center point in mind, and I'm going to just make a little circle around it. I have my camera here because you are not going to be able to see this. I am going to stop periodically, one, to dip my bit in water because of that whole temperature differential thing. And yes, and so whole happen. Um, and I'm going to snap some pictures so you can see. This is not going to be too loud and it should be fairly quick. So, we got a Dremel. I find it just as easy to hold it very much like a pencil. Okay. dump it in our little cup of water, and now I'm going to snap a picture so you can see. Okay, and I will insert the picture. Going back to work with the Dremel, and I'm going to cut that. Shouldn't have done that until I was through talking. I'm going to cut that a little deeper. Oh, and by the way, note, safety glasses, no jewelry. Water. Back to work. Now, as you may be noticing, I'm using the edge of this bit right here, the edge. I'm not going straight down. So this edge is digging in my circle. And in a few more passes, I'm going to take another picture of it for you. And you will see that it's a nice little circle cut out there.
crying. Um, and at this point, I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to do a little more of this. I think you've seen enough. I'm just turning the plate as I go. Um, you don't need to turn the plate. You can actually turn the Dremel if you want to. I just find it much easier to turn the plate. And it keeps me reasonably centered. Okay, I am going to do that whole time-lapse photography thing, pause this, do a little work, and then come right back to you, okay? Okay, I've gotten down to the point where I have a hole beginning to show through at the other side. And I've snapped a picture of this so that you can see it up close. But we're going to finish that hole, and then we're going to switch bits. And the hole just popped out very nicely. Now, okay. Now, changing Dremel bits is very easy. Um, I use the pliers to do it. There's a little tiny wrench that will come with your Dremel, but I find the pliers a lot easier. Tighten it up. Now this is a grinding bit. I am not using the tip of the bit. I'm using the sides. I'm going to drop it into the hole and then just expand it a little. And this should be very quick and easy. Now, I'm testing the size with the clock mechanism. And it's a little tight, so I'm going to continue. Now, all I'm doing with that is I'm just running it around the edge of the hole to widen it a little. Here we go. Now, okay, very good. Now, our clock mechanism is here. Before I do this, I'm going to peel off our clock numbers. Now, where are my clock numbers? Here they are. And in this case, I really don't need a template to line these numbers up, but of course I have one. And all I have to do is line it up at the top. There's my 12, down here is my six, and the rest of the numbers all fall into place. The reason I don't need a template for this particular piece is 12 points are marked off on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then in between, one, two, three, etc. It just happens to have 12 points already marked off. So, I am going to start with my top that's right here, and I am going to pop off some numbers, and these numbers are self-stick, I know, isn't it amazing? The hardest part of this job is going to be unsticking the numbers. And I'm just going to break them off. And then, here's stay. And then I will just line them up on the clock and press them in. So, I'm going to pause for a moment while I do that because you have better things to do with your life than watch me stick numbers to a plate. I will be right back. Well, it's a very good thing that I paused the filming 
because these delightful little self-stick numbers wouldn't stick. So I had to resort to super glue. Now, the next time I do this, knowing what I know now, which is these numbers don't stick, this is what I'm going to use instead. This is 3M foam tape. And this stuff is incredible. About 40 years ago, I have the bottom of a piano stool, the kind that has a seat that screws in on a large wooden screw so it can be raised and lowered just by twisting it. Oh, I had the bottom part. And I had a nice little piece of round marble, a round marble tabletop. And I used foam tape to hold the marble top in place while I flipped it over, traced around so I could drill the holes into the marble and to set some screws and keep that together. Well, I couldn't get it apart. I still can't get it apart. 40 years, okay? Five pieces of tape. So, next time around, I am going to glue it. It's like a cockroach. This stuff will outlast the apocalypse. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a sharp knife and I'm going to cut little slices of the tape stick it on the back of my numbers, and this is how I'm going to do it next time. And remember, my motto is, let me make the mistakes so you don't have to. So, if you're making a clock, the little numbers do not stick. You're going to need a backup plan. This is my suggestion. Now, this is what we are using. This is something I just picked up at Michael's. It's a clock kit. You can probably get it cheaper on eBay. I would think you should be able to. Although, frankly, I think I paid like $9 for it. It's not all that expensive. And these little kits come with hands in different sizes. The hands in this set are small because I'm using a small plate. Now, they, this comes with instructions. However, the instruction said to be cautious of the radio frequencies, which led me to believe that the instruction sheet I got was not designed for this. Seriously, no radio frequencies anywhere in this. So I don't know what they're talking about. You will have your little clock piece and your little rubber washer. Your little rubber washer goes on to your little clock mechanism. Your clock mechanism goes through the hole. Now, make sure that it's lined up properly. You can do this before you tighten it because you want your hanging piece to be level with the top of the clock. The next piece that's going to go on is a little brass washer. It's just going to slide on here. Oh, please, will you slide on? Yes, there we go. And then a little nut. Now this is the point at which we're going to line this up when we get our little nut reasonably tight. Now that's not reasonably tight. Tighten that up a little more. Oh, and how fortunate. I actually have some pliers here. Now, I want to tighten this tight enough so that it holds, but not tight enough so that it cracks the plastic. Now, from the back, I can line this up. And now, my hanger is like this. Now, let me show you from this side. This is where it hangs from, and you want that right at the middle. All right, next thing we do is we drop on our, our hand. And this should slide in here. And, 
and then we're going to drop on our minute hand. And the minute hand has a little squared off hole. And that little squared off hole is going to slide on and all we have to do is line it up properly. Oh, and this is very fiddly stuff. I'm going to pause you once again and take a better look at this. Okay, I got it on. The next is this teeny weeny little nut, very, very tiny. And we're going to need to screw that nut on. And it's going to hold the hands in place. Finally, we have our second hand, and that just pops in on top of everything else. So here we go. Now, we need a battery. And this is just a AA battery. I'm going to pop it in here. And as you can see, our second hand is moving. So, our clock is, in fact, working. I find that hard to read, but I'm quite certain that, if you can see, it's probably very easy to read. Uh, the clock in my kitchen is two feet across and has big black hands. So, this is me. This is not. And this is it. We are done. Here's our clock. Now, this is the same skill set at play that we used to make our tidbit trays. And I wanted to show you some other things you can do once you've got that whole drilling and porcelain thing down. You might have noticed these little buggers over here. In one of our most recent videos, I told you there's not a lot you can do with little um, cup and saucer sets. But... Yeah, I bet you're wondering what that is. Well, let me show you. If you come to my house for a cup of coffee, I'm going to have to dig around in the back of a cabinet, pull out this. This is an old cheese crock. All right. And then I'm going to have to open this up. And voila, here's the sugar. Uh, this is because I don't take sugar in my coffee, so it lives in the back of the cabinet. And it's all these little sugar dots. And it's very embarrassing because it's an old cheese crop. Meanwhile, this is a 200-year-old set of sterling silver sugar tongs. Yeah. Classy, right? Here we go. Here's our sugar. Here's our saucer for our lemon wedges. If you want tea with a little class, here you go. I did another one, same thing, but as you might notice, and let me grab these from the bottom so you can see a little better, the handles are different. This one is gold, and this one is, actually it's an antique brass, although it was called copper. When I purchased it, they said copper. I said, no, I think that's antique brass. Very, very easy. Look at that. So, guess what we've got for giveaways? Our little tea service set. Sugar on the top, 
lemon on the bottom, all set to go. And you won't have to do what I'm doing, which is keeping your sugar in an old cheese crock. I really need to do something about that. Either that or just don't bother coming to my house for coffee. It's just too embarrassing for words. Once you can drill through porcelain, and now we know how to do it with a regular drill. We know how to do it with the Dremel. With this little bit, we can expand our holes. And by the way, if you make a mistake with the hole, it's a little off center. Here you go. Very easy to straighten it out. Now, saw how quick and easy this was? We've got a working clock. We've got our little uh, sugar and lemon. And by the way, one of our viewers had sent me in a picture. What he had done was he had taken the cup, brought it down here with the saucer, taken another saucer, put it on top. So, saucer, cup, our little bar, another saucer upside down like a little umbrella, and then the little handle portion on top of that, and he turned it into a bird feeder. I thought that was remarkably clever. If you can drill, you can make things. And this is just a, a small example of what you can make. This is just what came to me when I was bored one afternoon, thinking about my uh, very utilitarian but not very attractive sugar crock. I bet there's a whole host of things you can make. So, giveaways. Both of these, these are Japanese lusterware teacups and saucers. So, let me hear from you. Give me that clock. Give me that tea set. And I will see you all tomorrow.